It was August 3rd, 1999, and my family had just moved into this colonial house originally built in 1853. It was one of those first subdivision-esque communities in northern New Hampshire at the time, and my dad, being the history aficionado that he is, fell in love as soon as he saw the memorial emblem on the side of the house. We didn't know what made the house so special, aside from its considerable age, but the house itself was quite magnificent, so my parents eagerly accepted the rather steep 550k price, and we quickly moved in. I was always a shy kid, and especially with my weight problem during the time, I never really socialized or got to know my community. This was the fourth time I had moved since I started school, so I never really understood the point of socializing, if I just had to say goodbye to those people eventually anyway. All things considered, though, my first few weeks were surprisingly enjoyable. I loved walking around the neighborhood and investigating my new surroundings playing with the neighborhood pets as soon as they were let out by their owners, and just being the good kid in the community. I wasn't really used to so much attention, and actually feeling loved was quite exciting. After a few weeks, I grew familiar with the area, and I decided to do some exploring of the house. I was checking every nook and cranny, looking for old books, spiders, whatever weird stuff I could find. I found a couple of old coins and some dusty abandoned corners that nobody else had noticed, and other such trivial discoveries, none of which I really paid any attention to. The only thing that really caught my eye was a hidden door that I found in the kitchen. I viewed this as my discovery, so I kept it to myself. It was hidden behind the fridge, and no one else really noticed it. I was able to move the fridge away from the door, and I only did so when I knew I was going to be home alone as to not be discovered. The door was locked, so I couldn't get past it, but just investigating it was really exciting. It was very dated compared to the rest of the house. A knocker is a doorknob, aged and extremely dense wood the whole nine yards. My parents told me that they were going on a dinner date and that they were going to trust me for the night. I decided that, this night, I would finally crack the code of the mysterious door and see what lies past the horizon. As soon as they left, I set to work. My parents loved watching TV shows and movies about crime, and there were always lots of scenes explaining how to pick the locks. I tried swiping the lock with an old blockbuster card that my mom had, but to no avail. Grunting about the hard work ahead of me, I straightened a paper clip and began to pluck at the lock. After about ten minutes or so, I grew frustrated at my failure and slammed the paper clip into the lock as hard as I could. For some reason, that alone cracked the lock and opened the door. The door creaked open loudly as I slowly pushed it and odor filled the kitchen area as I moved more and more into the hidden room, and more of the room became exposed. I still can't exactly put my finger on what it was, it just seemed a reek of age. Even though the kitchen was brightly lit, the area behind the door was pure black, almost as if it was the basement and it was sucking up the light and destroying it as the waves came into contact with the secret room. I grabbed a flashlight and shone it into the abyss to find a decayed flight of stairs with a broken rail. In the very distance, I could make out a decrepit floor that seemed stained by something, but I couldn't be sure. I felt a captivating feeling of discomfort and anguish as the aura of the room flooded me. Something told me to just turn around and run, but I had already come too far now. Terrified and apprehensive, I took my first step into the abyss that would soon become my new home. The stairs bellowed below me with every step I took. I became wary of the possible reality that the staircase wasn't sturdy, and was eaten away by termites, and that I would go plunging through the wood at any moment to my injury or death. 
Determined to push on, I rushed to the bottom of the stairs and slammed my feet against the coal ground. I shone my flashlight around me to reveal the details of the secret room, and to my astonishment, the room was extremely fancy. The floor was made entirely of marble, the walls had fine art on them, veils were hung from the ceiling as decoration, and the room was lined with gold. There was nothing in the high-class room, aside from the paintings. For some reason, the room reminded me of an old-time barber shop or something. It just seemed too nice. Noticing that there was a hallway in the corner of the room, I walked over to it. As soon as I arrived at the passageway, I noticed a distinct change in the quality of the decorations. The hallway itself was just a dull gray all around, made with cheap rock and no decoration whatsoever. Getting into this hallway made my knees shake, and I just really wanted to turn back then, but I couldn't. I knew what I had to do. I began stepping down the hallway. The hallway wasn't very big to begin with, but despite this, it continued to grow smaller and tighter as I walked more seeming almost to be slowly collapsing in on itself. I thought I had found the mother load. This was a secret passage that obviously extended past the house. There had to be something really cool at the end of this tunnel. Maybe treasure, ancient remains, or maybe even heaven. I had to find out. Just when the tunnel became almost impassable due to how insanely tiny it was, it quickly opened up into a room, about 7 feet long by 40 feet long. The room was creepy, to say the least. Spider webs with egg sacs littered the room, cockroaches seemed to have found a new world order here, and the walls themselves were stained and cracked. Three particular cracks lay side by side on a side wall, almost looking like claw marks. At the very end of the room, in the center of a black wall, was a picture frame. Advancing to the picture, I grew more and more terrified. I finally mustered up the courage to lift my flashlight and gaze at the picture that stood before me. I raised my flashlight and literally felt the life rush out of me as my eyes met the picture. The picture seemed to be of a woman. She had been brutally tortured and beaten. She bore a Chelsea urine, extending all the way to her ears. Her left eye was missing and her hair had been burnt off. Her upper lip had been cut off and removed, revealing her entire gum line, which was also clearly plagued with extremely severe gingivitis. The rest of her entire face was covered in blood and cuts and bruises as well. What was most disturbing, however, was her skin. It varied in hue, sometimes a human peach and sometimes a moldy green. It seemed as if her skin had began to grow a fungus, and that said fungus was causing her skin to rupture. Numerous boils plagued her complexion, and it almost seemed like her skin was peeling or melting. Someone had carved a haunting smile into the side of her neck, eerily similar to her Glasgow smile. On the other side of her neck, coming down from the top of her torso were the words, I am a fucking horror, carved into her skin. No matter which way I moved, the picture seemed to follow my every move. Horrified and freaked out, I dashed out of the room and tore down the hallway at full speed. I ran into the fancy room and darted up the stairs, slamming the door behind me, and I quickly pulled the refrigerator over it. I felt like I was being stalked. I soon realized that, in a way, I was. One of the spiderwebs had caught my hair, and a family of a hundred freshly hatched baby spiders and their mother were making a new home in my locks. I grabbed a can of Raid and brought that family to their end, quickly. It was night by then, and my parents had just gotten home. I quickly washed my hair and said hey. They asked me what I did, and I told them that I just read a few books and took a walk, played with a few of the neighborhood kids, and relaxed. 
I went to bed shortly after that, tossing and turning throughout the night, and after what seemed like hours, I finally dozed off. The next few days were fine, the horror of that night seeming to fade away. I went back to playing with the neighborhood kids a lot, just walking around and being myself. I quickly forgot what the girl looked like, almost as if it never happened. One day, I was shown a new friend of mine around my house. He thought the house was awesome, looking at every little thing like it was magical. He made a mess of my room, of course, but he's a bit of a spaz, so I kind of expected it. Once I finished showing him the upstairs rooms, the living room, and the dining room, he darted into the kitchen to grab something to drink. Too tired to follow, I just gazed out of the window. Suddenly, I heard him exclaim that he found a door, and as soon as that rang out, I heard the scrape of the refrigerator against tile. I screamed at him to stop, but he was too fast, and he had already run down. I followed him, and he was astonished by the beauty of the fancy room. He looked at all the beautiful paintings, danced around the room, and acted as if he was in some old-time movie. I, however, I could feel that anxiety again. I really didn't like being down here. I told him to come upstairs, and he obliged. When we got upstairs, I noticed that he had a bit of paper in his hand. He must have grabbed it while he was dancing around. I asked him for it. I opened it up and saw that it was a handwritten receipt for a super durable window, one that couldn't be broken, along with concrete blocks, drywall, cement. And then I noticed the extra note at the bottom of the receipt. The bitch can look at whoever she wants to. I don't care how cute she is. She'll never get out. I finally told my parents, and they called the police. The police came and they busted the wall down, only to find a dead girl, beaten, tortured, and brutalized, hanging from a noose facing an unbreakable window with a Glasgow smile on her face. The original owner of her home was captured and charged with murder. <laughs>